Chester Chibere was built or began to be built in 1221 by Llewellyn the Great. Who was nearing the height of his career, he extended his power across Wales, often attacking the south and into England as well at times. Willem the Great built this castle in Dufferin de Sini, which is quite remarkable because it's not along the main path in many ways towards other areas. It was built as a place to keep cattle. Not, not just that, but the cattle pasture land is very rich. Llewellyn kept his cattle there. Now in this time cattle would have been used in many cases as currency so this castle being quite big for the period and the area was a marker that he was guarding his wealth and it was a signifier to other princes that this was undisputably his domain. It was a real power move in his part to put this castle in the south of Marioni, the Gwena, near the borders with other princes in many ways. He was asserting a stronger and more cohesive territorial dominion. Following Llewellyn's death in 1240, Gwynedd's power declined and many of its eastern lands were taken by Henry III, the father of the psychopath Edward. Llewellyn's grandson, another Llewellyn, Llewellyn of Griffith, took power in 1255. He had a bit of warfare to carry on with other Welsh princes, but he gradually gained control. Llewellyn extended the castle with an additional tower to the south, similar to that built at Dolvorwin. So Welsh architecture had a, a tradition of its own being built over time. And this was likely to provide extra accommodation. The Welsh royal court was very transient in its location, moving around. The conflict between the Welsh princes and England continued as Edward I came to power. Thank you. 
Being able to tax upon Wales utilized new forms of castle building that he had taken from the Middle East. He went to the Holy Land and Casa Chiberi was not really a part of that. It, it did not fit into his designs, but he did build, it appears, uh, a stronger garrison there. He did use it because he wanted the hinterland of what he saw as a hinterland able to be guarded from an uprising. He also had plans to build an English town there to import well, immigrants into Wales, to anglicize Wales, to change the culture into being English by using this castle. He recognized therefore that this was a very significant power structure that he could use, otherwise he would not have bothered with it, though it was definitely not central to his plans at all. It was too Welsh. There's some confusion about which castle was the last one to fall in the wars of 1283-84. It could have been Dolwethelan or it could have been Casa Chibere. The English and Welsh sources say different things. But we just need to know that when you're conquering a country, you can alter the history. Edward, after the conquest, continued to invest money into the castle. It was useful, and it was a symbol of political power. The town that he established was probably just to the east. King Edward did visit the castle more than once. He wanted to ferment his rule over a people that he had forcefully conquered. By the 16th century, the castle had lapsed into a state of decay. It wasn't needed to be used by the Welsh, and the English didn't want a castle in the middle of Wales to be in a good state, frankly. The poet Gryfid Hraithog in the 16th century, he had this to say, On the banks of Avon de Sini is Casa Chibere, where stood a large strong building, but which now is destroyed and cast to the ground. So by this period it's really in a state of ruin. So what about the architecture? Today the ruins of Casa Chibere are still there, they're on this rocky outcrop, with protective ditches built 
and cut into the stone to the south and east sides. The entrance to the castle lies on the west, where the Barbican, probably built by Edward rather than Llewellyn, contains two gate towers overlooking the stone steps in the inner gate. Though they could have been built by Llewellyn, we don't know for sure. The North Tower is a D-shape, and this is remarkably Welsh. If you're going around Wales, you'll see a lot of D-shaped towers, and this is an indicator that it's, it's not English. What is today the middle of the tower was originally the southernmost part of the defences, but now leads through the ditch yard to the South Tower. Unusual for an early Welsh castle, there's evidence of decorative sculpture around the castle, so there was quite a bit of effort put into building this as a tool of propaganda by Llewellyn the Great.